It is indeed a blessing to be alive another day. So we thank the Most High for it, for another expression of his mercy on this morning. If any of you are like me, surely you've come to the understanding that there was nothing that you did that was deserving of experiencing such a great blessing again. And we are here only because of the Most High's mercy and His favor that He has shown toward us. So we thank Him for being able to forgive us for our sins and for forgive us for our shortcomings and our transgressions against Him and thereby giving us another opportunity to uh, try and get it right another day. So, that being said, we just want to say that, make that proclamation this morning that uh, we're grateful. And this is a day that the Most High have made. We should all try to find a way to rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what kind of situations we find ourselves in, and believe me, many of our brothers and sisters have wakened only to find themselves in some uh, bad situations. But I heard a brother say one time that if you think this day or this morning is, is too bad, is too rough, if you think the things that you got to face is, is more than you can handle or more than you can deal with, he said try, try getting along without the day. Seeing with that being said, as long as the Most High give us another day, it don't make no difference what kind of situations we are facing. We are still here to face them. A live dog is better than a dead lion. So, so we're grateful on this morning. And I'm on our way to, to get a brother and sister united in holy matrimony and uh, I was thinking about a particular scripture in light of all of the things that are happening uh, Yeshua Jesus the Messiah said that as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be in the coming of the son of man in the days of Noah they were eating they were drinking, they were marrying, and they were giving in marriage. And then the flood came and took them all away. It didn't take everybody away. It left a few people. But the vast majority of the people that was on the earth, the Most High's destruction swept them away. And these are some of the signs that the scripture give us as a means to have a comprehension of the things that are coming. It don't make no difference what you classify, what you classify yourself as from a religious standpoint. Christian, Israelite, Muslim, that don't matter. The only thing that matters is whether or not we're going to be the ones found getting caught up in the Most High's destruction and swept off the earth. Many brothers, because they wear the title Christian, they think that that automatically entitles them to some type of salvation. Or because they believe or say they believe in Jesus, that these things don't apply to them. Israelites, I included. You know, a lot of times we think that we have some type of some type of automatic salvation because of what we say we are. Islamic brothers as well think that they have some type of some type of guaranteed salvation because of what they say that they are. Well, I don't know about nobody else, but I'm at the most high's mercy because I don't know what the end going to be. Nobody knows actually in actuality 
the intensity of what the Most High expects from us as his people. Nobody on this planet has ever had the capability to live up to a righteousness that they have never seen exemplified on the earth. So how do any man discern or tell what it is righteousness? The Bible says in a man's eyes, all of his ways are ways of righteousness. But in the end, they're ways of death. See, just because we think a certain type of way, that don't mean that that's how it's going to go. So, I just say to myself sometimes, most how I don't know how it's going to go. And I don't know the answers. Though I try to seek them out, I don't fully know. Uh, so, my prayer is to just let me be found in your favor. No matter what it is, let me just be found in your favor, you know? So, but I'm looking at that scripture because people are going on with life as they always have, you know? Okay, you say, well, it's COVID-19 out here. Well, we just pick up a mask and keep on going. And we keep on going and doing the same things that we have been pre-exposed to doing since we've been on the planet. But the Messiah gives us a stark warning. He said the same thing, same way it was in Noah's day. It's going to be when I come and crack the sky. He said, and people going to be carrying on with their everyday lives like they always was. And basically what it's saying is that we'll be so preoccupied and consumed with the life that we live in. That there are many things that we won't be paying attention to. We won't be taking the state of the world serious enough to do what Noah did. You see, Noah got the instructions from the Most High to his grandfather to tell Noah to go and hide himself in the earth because God's destruction was on the way. Well, the same thing is being told to people right now. To hide yourself don't literally mean that you go and find a rock to crawl up under. The book of Proverbs says a wise man foresees evil and then hides himself. To hide yourself is to take heed of those things that the Most High said were going to take place. Noah being warned of a dream. The Bible says move with fear and built the ark to save his house. Those are some of the things that we're supposed to be doing right now. We're being warned of things not yet seen. Things that have not hit the earth yet, but we can see the sprinkles of them. He said he'd been warned and he moved with fear. Even though he hadn't seen the things come to full fruition you see when we see these prophetic things that are spoken in the scripture you are talking about moving now based on some things that your physical eyes haven't seen now Noah was warned possibly in a dream of things that were to transpire nevertheless he moved based on those things that he seen even though they had not materialized yet. And so when we start dealing with the scripture from the standpoint of prophecy, then we have to become like Noah and we have to move with fear. Not as though these things, well, I know they're going to take place. I know they're in the Bible, you know, but in your mind, you think they're going to take place 50 years from now. See, Noah moved with fear immediately and began to build an ark. And it took over a hundred years for him to complete that art. And it may take that long for these things to materialize in our life, but there's no guarantee that it's going to take that long. So when we look at the flood coming and destroying almost the whole of mankind, now we look at the prophecies of the Messiah where he says things like, and it was given to him to make war and to overcome the saints. And that 
if he didn't shorten the time, Satan would kill all the people on the earth. Because God killed all the people on the earth back in Noah's day. He said, so it's going to be the same thing. He said, but because of Noah being found righteous in my eyes, I preserve Noah and his family. And in this last hour, he says, when I find those that are righteous in my eyes, I will preserve them. He said, but other than that, if I didn't come back and preserve those people that I found righteous, Satan would destroy and kill everybody on the planet. And that is what we see materializing now through the guise of COVID-19 and Bill Gates and them and their vaccines. That is what we see now. That's what we see that was being sprinkled through Margaret Sanger and so many others that were trying to constantly kill off the people that God had put on the earth. The average person's mindset can't even grasp the fact of just how many billions of people are going to die. They are going to die. Some of us might be included. They are going to die because the Bible declares that they are going to die. There shall be blood shed, blood spilled that will come up to a horse's bridle when God's wrath get in the earth. You see? And so I just, you know, sometimes you don't know what to do because you think because you believe in Jesus that some kind of way we can thwart these things that are prophesied to happen. Well, just the very fact that we believe in the Messiah is letting you know that there is no way possible that we're going to be able to thwart these things. There is no way possible that we're going to be able to escape it. For these things that these wicked people in this earth have been playing, and they will materialize. It's a rolling snowball downhill, and there is nothing that nobody can do to stop it. No, I don't care how much information that we put out there. The information that we're putting out there is not to try and stop it or thwart it. But it's more or less uh, trying to build up people's spiritual immune system so that we can be able to go through these things. Now, the book of Revelation says that, that to the one that overcomes, he will keep him from the hour of temptation. What does that mean? What does that mean exactly? To be kept from the hour of tribulation that's going to come up on the world and try the whole world. See, we know... That, that the tribulation is coming up on the world. Because if it wasn't coming up on the world, then there would be no need for the Most High to keep some of his people from experiencing it. But what does he mean when he said, I will keep thee from the hour of tribulation that is to come up on the world? There are different things that some people believe that it's the rapture. That God just going to miraculously cause all of the people on the earth to disappear. I don't know whether it's the rapture or not. I know what the scripture says. In John 17 chapter, Jesus prayed that the Most High would not take his people out of the earth, but that he would preserve and protect them in the earth. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. That means that God didn't take Noah out of the earth. God preserved Noah while he was in the earth. He preserved and protected him in the midst of destruction. And so when we look at these things on how the Messiah is dealing with these things, you know, to be kept from the hour of temptation could mean that the Most High allow you to become a martyr and allow you to die early. You see, we don't know what vehicle that he's going to use as the preservation mechanism to keep his people from the hour of temptation. We don't know. But when we start using precepts, then we come to a greater understanding. Because I myself used to believe in the rapture, used to teach the rapture and everything until I came across that scripture. And we start putting those scriptures together. God didn't rapture Noah out of the world. God preserved Noah and protected Noah in the midst of chaos and destruction. And then Jesus come along and pray that my prayer is not that you would take them out of the world that you have given me.
but that you would keep them from the evil that's going to take place in the world. So we may be in the world and we may come to a place to where we are hidden right in the midst of chaos, a chaotic situation, and then be preserved by it. But one thing that's for certain, two things that are for sure, these things are going to happen. We have already been overcame by the one that is making war against us through the monetary system. We have already been overcame because now we are forced to do what the wicked powers and rulers of this world, they are corralling God's people like sheep and cattle. And by that standpoint, you've been overcame. I don't care what walk of life you come from. If you using do dollars to go to the grocery store and buy food, if you using dollars to go buy gas, if you using all of these things to get the things that you need and you have to go to the people that own the corporations and, the, the, and ultimately it is these wicked people that own everything, you already been overcame because whatever they put in place, you won't have to comply with or either you're not going to survive. So if you tell me that that's not being overcame, I don't know what to tell you. I don't care what church you belong to. I don't care how, how much you say I'm blessed, I'm highly favored. You have been overcame through a wicked system, even though you may not fully understand it. If you've been sending your children to school to be taught by the wicked, you've been overcame. If you have to comply with the things that your job says that you have to comply with, you've been overcame. If somebody come and tell you that you have to wear a mask in order to enter into a facility and you put that mask on, you have been overcame because you have now lost the right to move in ways that you would desire to move in as an individual. And you're taking your cues from the wicked ones of this world. See, everybody out here that's driving a car need gas in it. But in order to get the gas, you must comply with the wicked rulers that own the oil companies and own all of the, all the gas facilities. And when they start shutting these things down, because this is how they're going to corral people. That's why we put the information out there yesterday about the, the Rockefeller PDF files that, that got leaked on how they systematically step by step using this coronavirus to corral people. And then there are still more things that are yet to come. And even though the information is out there, that does not change the false prophets that are on TV that are causing people to move according to what they are prophesying. It ain't stopped nothing. It can't be stopped. It cannot be stopped because the Most High in his foreknowledge already seen the evil that men would do. Release that information to the prophets and the prophets wrote those things down so that the people can have a comprehension of the things that would transpire. And as they seen them transpire, they would come to understand that the word was the living truth and then have faith built. We're entering into the most wicked time on the planet. That's what Jesus the Messiah said. He should say there shall be tribulation as such as never been seen in the history of the world, nor will there ever be. And if I didn't come back and shorten the time for the elect's sake, no flesh would be spared. That means that no human beings or animals would be spared. Well, we see right now, we have been partakers of their wickedness as they've already slaughtered and killed the vast bulk of the animals that are flesh and blood on this planet. And we have been partakers of their murder and of their idolatry. When the Bible speaks of, of idolatry and sacrificing things unto idols, and you start looking at the things that are sacrificed to idols, there's only one thing that is sacrificed to idols. And it's not fruits and vegetables and grains and herbs. There is only one thing in the scripture that is sacrificed to idols. And everybody makes excuses and justification when it comes to certain things like this. Because they can find their forefathers doing these things in the book. But show me in the book anywhere outside of when, when Abel brought his sacrifice. Show me anywhere. 
because it said Abel brought the first thing of his flock, but it never said that he put him on a blazing altar. For how would he put him on a blazing altar when he was the first sons that was the first sons on the earth and had not been exposed to anything like this? But show me one place in the scripture where the things that were being offered to idols were fruits and vegetables. So that gives you the ability to draw a line of distinction between what things that people were sacrificing. And we have become a partaker of these things too. Our hands are full of blood. We are not innocent. And it don't make no difference what we think we're innocent or not. These are many of the things. He said that there are going to be great tribulation such as had never been seen in the history of the world. Neither will it ever be seen again. We ain't never seen as much death as we coming up on seeing. World War II, the Vietnam War, World War I, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War. Ain't all of the wars combined that have ever been fought on the earth. When you combine them, they will not even be a speck on a snow-capped mountain compared to the people that the Messiah said were going to die in this earth. And all praises, all honor, all glory to the Most High. Some of us are going to be martyred. You see? Some of us, the Most High may cause us to, to just die before we get to all of these things. Some of us are going to march through guillotines and be beheaded because the Bible says it through this antichrist period and this period of non-compliance Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 and I saw the souls of them under the altar that have been beheaded for their testimony and the word of God who love not their own lives neither did they accept the mark of the beast or his name or the number of his name and they lived and they reigned with Christ a thousand years, but they had to they had to sacrifice their lives. The Bible tells us that He caused as many as would not worship Him that they should be killed. So these wicked people are putting things in place right now that if you don't take their vaccines, you understand what I'm saying? Then this is what the FEMA camps will lead to death. And they shall deliver you up unto the magistrates, and you shall have tribulation for ten days. But be thou faithful to death, and I'll give you a crown of life. You see, the Messiah is letting us know that we have to be building our spiritual immune system up, that we can stand by faith all the way to the point of death. And that's going to be difficult to do. And even though I can preach the word, I know the word is hidden in my heart and everything. There is a physical part of me that is shooken and seized and gripped with fear when the spirit brings those things to reality and truth and make me understand. This might be you that have to walk through a guillotine. This might be you that have to watch your wife put to death. This might be you that have to watch your children die. This might be you that have to go through a period of torture as they cut off one limb at a time trying to get you to renounce Jesus. This may be you and if you really start looking at things for what they really are because we are human beings and we have a fleshly nature. We have have the capacity to experience things like joy, like peace, like fear, like frustration, like discouragement. When you really start understanding the scripture for what it really is, man, we got to be built up. We still got our brothers out here fighting. Talking about black women, about black men, but still talking about the 12 tribes and, and who that who gives a damn where they are. Only thing that matters, it don't matter about the 12 tribes, it don't matter about all the people on the earth because many of the children of the kingdom are going into outer darkness. Many shall come and sit down from Many shall come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. Many people are too busy fighting about all oh, Israel, all oh, Israel, all the Christian is false, the Christian is paganism, all the Muslims worship a rock. You know what? That's a bunch of foolishness because whoever can stand through, the, through this time that's coming, there are many people, there are many people that are weak now that will be able to stand when that time comes. And there are many people 
that lay claim to being strong now that will falter in the end. Well, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Yep. So, as we said before, uh, we're looking at uniting the brother and sister in holy matrimony on this morning. And we're thinking about that as it was in the days of Noah. I want to say something to my Christian brothers, too. To my Christian brothers. You better go into some silent warfare and some silent prayer about what the will of the Most High is. Because it's time out trying to teach people how to be blessed in the world that's falling apart. They got the preachers and the pastors walking around here with masks on. Many of these preachers and pastors are going to usher their people right into the mouth of the beast as they encourage them and persuade them to go do COVID testing. And as they encourage and persuade them to take their vaccines because they themselves have already been pre-exposed and used to taking their medications. We'll take their medications even though we know that the medications is only designed to make you sicker and sicker. They'll give you a medication and say it's for one thing, but then you got nine other things that are riding on the back of it that's designed to make you sicker and sicker and sicker, and yet you jump in the pulpit and declare how good the Most High is and declare that Jesus is the physician, the great physician, but you'll put your trust in the wicked doctors in this world that are causing the destruction of people, exemplify no faith at all, taking your cues from CNN, taking your cues from the most wickedest people on the planet, the Dr. Fauci and them, and they have put these things in the hands of these people right here, and our brothers out here have shut the door to God's house rather than to go against and not comply. We have done those things. Not just our brothers in church, but our Israelite brothers. Our brothers that in Islam too. Don't tell me that Allah is great and you can't keep the mosque open. If Allah was that great, he would rebuke anything that was coming against the will for his people. If Jesus was that great and had all power in his hand, why would you have to be listening to what some wicked person in this earth have to say? You better think about it. We did, a, we did a video almost five years ago where we showed you, during Barack Obama's presidency, we showed you how they had heaped up 250,000 pastors that had linked up and was on the payroll of FEMA that when all these things started unfolding themselves and coming out, they would usher their people into the FEMA camps for protection and safety. You'll usher your people into the mouth of the beast for protection and safety. And so many of them are so arrogant. They're so arrogant to think that they can understand or comprehend the mind of God that they won't listen to anybody. Even when you're showing them the scripture, they don't listen. They'll make excuses. Oh, yeah, I know the scriptures say that. But there ain't no but. Either God's word is true or it's not. So we need to build up our spiritual immune system because within this article, these things are not going to back up. They have already told you that that was going to wrap the numbers up so bad that anybody that died, anybody that went to the hospital was going to be classified as COVID positive. Anybody that died, I don't care, they choked on a chicken bone. They died of coronavirus. These things have already been systematically planned. And you know what? Because we have been slaves to the monetary system, they speak through their money. Everything that's going to transpire in this world is put on the money.
So you can go and look at the $20 bill and fold it backwards and you can see their agenda. As the person on the $20 bill has a mask over his face. All of these things are hidden in plain sight. And then people look and say, conspiracy theorists, conspiracy theorists. Well, let me tell you something. If you got a conspiracy theorist, that means that you have a group of people that's out here conspiring to do something wicked. And the only way that this word conspiracy theorist is born is as a means to discredit the people that's talking. But every, almost every, everything that was ever classified as a conspiracy theory had been later found out to be true. Only it's too late. Once you get in the alligator's mouth, it's too late to try to get out. It's too late. And God has been merciful to all of us to uh, uh, as we try to repent. And he'd be merciful to give us another chance. But there's going to come a time to where he said, look, the alligator got you now. Ain't no need in calling on me. You're already in the alligator's mouth. You take the mark. The syringe is going to leave a mark. You'll know what the mark of the beast is because they're going to mandate that everybody in the world take it. He calls all, both small, great, rich, poor, free, and bond to receive a mark. Lest they can't buy, work, or sell. You see, this is something that's forced on you. Everybody wondering about what the mark of the beast is. What the mark of the beast is. Well, the mark of the beast ain't going to be something you can see. The mark on, of the beast is going to be a mark left on the human body by a syringe. It's going to change everything. It's going to change everything. Because that syringe is going to have nanotechnology in it. And it's going to have tracking ability in it. And they're going to be able to know with pinpoint accuracy who have received it and who have not received it. You ain't going to need nothing else after you take the mark. You ain't going to need nothing. You'll be able to go buy what you want, sell what you want. You'll be able to do whatever you want because you are linked up now and you have become a part of the robotic technology and quantum physics and all that. Now you have become a part of the internet of things, that 5G technology that hooks everything to the internet, whether it's your trash can, whether it's the underwear that you're wearing, whether it's the sunglasses that you're wearing, whether it's the food that you're eating, whether it's the car that you're driving, whatever it is, every single product that's being made in this world is being made with this technology and everything is being connected to the internet. And they call it the internet of things and you become a part of this world system. And the Most High ain't going to just tell people because if the gospel be hidden, it's hidden to those that are lost. And the wise man's eyes is in his head. But there be many that will have eyes but will not see the things that are happening. And they will be deceived. Because the Messiah said it. False prophets going to rise in the earth and deceive many. Every time you turn the TV on, there's deceptions jumping out. Deceptions jumping out, deceptions jumping out, and more deception, and more deception, and more deception. So much information is being flooded out there. It's like finding a needle in a haystack to find the truth. So if you ain't walking by the spirit of the Most High, and the Most High Spirit is giving you foresight and insight and discernment, we stand to be deceived. He said if it was possible to deceive the elect, the Antichrist would. So when you start talking about that, you got to ask, who is the elect? The elect will be those that have sacrificed their whole life, given their whole life over to the leadership of the spirit. They will not love their life. They will walk by faith and not by the things that they see. Thereby, they will receive the guidance of the spirit that the Messiah promised them. And this is the promise that I have made you. And the spirit will come and he will lead you and he will guide you. He will lead you in ways of truth. He will not speak of himself. He will lead you in ways of truth and he will show you the things that the wicked are preparing. He'll show you the things that are coming. He'll show you what's coming. You won't have to rely on no TV but the spirit will show you things before they happen so that you'll know how to prepare. That's why Solomon said the wise man's eyes is in his head. And there's too many people out here relying on information, relying on knowledge, relying on books, relying on men that's walking around with robes and men that's walking around with fringes, relying on all the wrong things. When God said, this is the promise that I made you, the promise of eternal life. And I'm writing these things concerning them that would seduce you. It's the men that's on the earth that would seduce God's people. He said, but you have a spirit, an anointing that is abiding in you, that you need not any man that teach you. But as that spirit teach you, you shall abide in it. You shall abide in the things that the spirit teach. 
Listen. We need to build up our spiritual immune system. I need to build minds up too. That's why I'm reminding myself of these things every day. Don't talk to me about none of that. Preacher, pastor, or Kohen, don't talk to me about none of that. Man shall not live by bread alone, but he shall live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. There is no way possible. You think that you're going to preach a 20-minute sermon, freeze-dry, vacuum-packed, written-out sermon to a people. You wrote it out last week, but the people need to hear something fresh this week. You think that they're going to live and be able to survive and have faith built when they can only hear from you once a week? Oh, no, you better find a way. If you're going to do God's work. You better find a way to deal with people on a daily basis. Every day that God wake you up, you better have something to say. Even if you ain't got no Bible. Even if you ain't got no notes. If you need Bible and a notes to be able to speak a word of God to people on a daily basis, the most high declares, I will open up the window of heaven and pull you out blessings you won't have room enough to receive. There's so much word that God can pour out on us, we ain't got room to receive it. I can walk past a thousand people in a day and give every last one of them a piece of God's word and still have more word. I would never be able to run out of it. And you're going to tell me that we people wait one, wait six days to hear a word from God and then put you on a pedestal? Well, not on my watch. You ain't going on no pedestal on my watch unless you dig your heels down in there and recognize the day that we are living in. And one day soon, God's going to pull the cover off of everything that declared that they was representing him when they really wasn't. Now, I'm at the park. I ain't going to get you ravved up. So, all praises to the Most High Heavenly Father. Let us get in our quiet place. Let us get in our quiet place. Go on and put your books down. Go on and put your books down and let the Spirit do what the Spirit do. Okay? Because the promise of the Messiah declared that the Spirit will lead you. The Spirit will guide you. You see? The Spirit will lead you and the Spirit will guide you. The Spirit will make intercession for us with groaners that cannot be uttered because he knows what the mind of the Spirit is. God, he who searcheth the heart, he knows what the mind of the Spirit is he, for the Spirit makes intercession for us. God who search our heart, put the Spirit in the world and the Spirit knows what God's will is for our life. You can read all the books you want, but if you fail to get this, what I'm telling you today, then you're going to fall up under the same thing as the rest of these people. Billions are about to be destroyed simply because the Messiah said it. All praises.